a very good afternoon all i am ritesh chavla welcome to reimagine a school leadership virtual webinar series presented by uni apply so today uh, as usual that we discuss every time we bring a topic where we discuss uh, the the issues and uh, the innovation the support which schools are doing for the society a lot many things which they are doing within the school outside the school to help the society at large and we bring panelists from the school so today in fact we have uh, six school leaders with us and uh, they will help us to understand a very important topic today back to school decoding the admission process for schools in noida and greater noida so in fact uh, for all our viewers i will just uh, you know would like to thank you to jo uh, to join this webinar and uh, also uh, welcome panelists to uh, and i would like to thank you to join this webinar today i i represent uniapply.com and for all the viewers i would like to simplify that what uniapply is uniapply is basically a school admission platform which is transforming and digitizing the school application and admission process and uniapply is a product of no paper form and with the help of today's topic we uh, will take the views of uh, our uh, panelists today and without taking much of time i will i would like to introduce uh, panelists so i would like to welcome mrs anjali mittal ma'am ma'am is the vice principal with koshalya world school greater noida welcome anjali ma'am thank you yeah so i'll move next and would like to introduce mr sujit tandon sir is the principal with rockwood school noida uh, welcome sujit sir uh, thank you uh, thank you for providing an opportunity to be a speaker in this uh, in august forum right and uh, you know thank you yeah please please uh now i would like to welcome ms richa sharma ma'am ma'am is principal with ragab global school noida welcome richa ma'am good afternoon everyone thank you uh, next i would like to introduce uh, mrs miss neha singh ma'am ma'am is the head of school set mr jaipuria uh, school in greater noida right it is it's in greater noida west basically uh, so welcome neha ma'am thank you so much everyone right uh, now uh, i would like to welcome jyoti ma'am miss jyoti singh ma'am is the principal with rps international school greater noida welcome jyoti ma'am thank you thank you so much and good afternoon to all of the panelists right uh, i would like to welcome rita call ma'am uh, ma'am is with us so i would request my team to go back to the slide where uh, we can read about ma'am ma'am is the director with the millennium school noida and uh, with her experience i believe all of us will learn so much right welcome uh, rita ma'am thank you so much and uh, thanks for providing us platform at least meeting each other online <laughs> right right so in fact in last uh, few days i can see a good amount of panelists today so that we can have a fruitful discussion so uh, as we all know that uh, this last two years had been really tough right when we look at pandemic we never expected that overnight what has happened right uh, with the lockdown situation uh, and the new normal coming in place school reopening then again shutting down because of the second wave and the third wave there are government norms and there had been a lot of uh, you know impact on the entire education system not only the education system but also on the various business and domains right so we will understand that and uh, the whole objective is to basically educate the parents with the help of uh, uni apply platform where we are live on zoom parents are there uh, who are with us on zoom and of course parents are live with us on facebook so our objective is to make them understand that how important now back to school is and uh, we will uh, discuss various important aspect on back to school and uh, we will also try and help parents to understand uh, that how they can decode the admission process where they have certain common question so now without taking much of time on the intro part i would straight away go to the Uh, you know questions for today and uh, i will start my first question with uh, rita ma'am 
so ma'am is director with millennium school so ma'am uh, as we all know that back to school is really important and now schools are fully operational uh, and you know functional in such a way where we can see the staff and the uh, the management and the teachers they are coming uh, to the school but uh, is school is open for the complete physical and the hybrid mode also so are you still catering the hybrid needs of the parent uh, we are we are because honestly it is not about uh, greater noida or noida it is happening across the world it's, i'm happy that you raised this question to us because uh, there are a number of reasons one vaccination is something which worries the parents right so when, you know just day before yesterday the 12 to 15 category has been allowed to right the uh, parents are worried about the vaccination thing then there are uh, parents uh, their children who lost one or the other parent during covid right. and they are outstation they are operating from their hometowns there are children who have lost both the parents right, right. so uh, hybrid mode is something with your head i mean our journey now we cannot deny and even today when uh, nursery to class 12 is on i would honestly say that 15 to 20% children are not coming to school right we are trying to motivate them especially those who are out of station we understand their you know uh, they have some kind of an problem not to come but those who are around the state and parents are highly educated right right but they are so worried because all of us go through that anxiety and i think most of us must have gone through the covid experience personally also right for parents to have this insecurity and be worried about their children is a genuine So right. I think hybrid for those children is, I mean, for any school at every school across the world is something that we have to continue. Right, right. So thank you for putting across uh, this point, ma'am. Uh, this is quite valid that parents had suffered, and every individual because of COVID, uh, whether it's a loss of life, loss of income, loss of job opportunity, or maybe some other impact, everyone. had been impacted uh, because of this covid in the entire world so uh, i will now quickly go to anjali ma'am and would like to understand ma'am when we talk about restarting of school after you know almost two years now right uh, in the march only the covid was the lockdown was announced right and uh, now after two years when the schools are reopening and uh, you know uh, now in fact the wave is also like that school has to reopen in the full fledger manner right and uh, that good notion is there that now parents are also agreed uh, and they are sending their wards we can in the morning these days we can see buses are running from here to there now when we talk about the fully resumption of uh, the physical school right that comes with lot of challenges and the challenges like uh, everything has to be in a functional mode right it it's right from your classroom to your sports area to your washroom to your drink or uh, drinking water area and the laboratories and uh, you know Uh, library etc so there are a lot of places where uh, you know student moves around it is not just one place where uh, they have to be inside the classroom of course there are challenges to maintain the building and the infrastructure so it had been difficult in last two years so how you are ensuring that everything is in a working condition because now uh, students are going to be back to school uh it's a very valid uh, question i i guess and uh, first of all i'd like to say that uh, uh it's more of an emotional rebeginning <laughs> in the sense that uh, the parents are excited the children are excited the teachers are excited we can see that now children have already started coming to school like say you know in bits and pieces we see that the middle wing the senior wing children already started coming back and the kind of excitement they have on their faces right. uh, they never loved their school uh, classroom and buildings as much as they do now right. so earlier i guess it was like they used to take it for granted the school building the classrooms but um, when the little separation came their way so in these years i think the they started valuing and cherishing their school uh quite more and uh, we all the way excited i guess it's a very valid question because for two years it has been you know completely distance learning uh, off and on we have been coming offline but since the journey started uh, right in august where you know we opened a bit for the senior wing and then you know in october middle wing already the pre primary also started coming so uh, somewhere you would see that um, already the schools have settled quite a lot 
you know right. we have already been back to the physical environment we've already uh, catered to all those challenges where it is coming to maintenance of washrooms that you say that gardens and sports areas so all the challenges i'm i'm sure that all the schools have almost addressed because we are, again we have started uh, in the normal mode um, but uh, i wouldn't uh, disagree with the fact when it comes to uh, you know opening as a whole reopening as a whole entity when uh, we are expecting almost 100% children Right. to come back so there's still uh, you know challenges going on okay right. and uh, uh, but i'm sure like all the schools have al already addressed or we are you know just closing on to that right i will just take a quick view on the same question from neha ma'am neha ma'am uh, in fact uh, now you see the offices are uh, coming back to the physical mode and now there will be a situation where parents has to send their wards to Uh, school and that to their dependency on the school transport will go up and um, last two had been difficult and the it transport was not in a working condition if you talk about resumption of uh, transport services after two years may takes uh, some some challenges so how your school is addressing or uh, how you are you know answering or uh, taking care of this dependency of parents all right so i think as a community first of all we have to understand that the children are coming from a, an informal you know a setup to where our formal setup now right, right. so and un, un, until we admit that we'll not be able to do something about it right the first is the acceptance so at mine is an upcoming school so our session is going to start from april we are right. taking all the measures which are required we are reiterating the parents we are you know uh, we are giving the we are, we are we are working on the implementation of the all the covid protocols you know, right. that we have to for so our uh, covid policy has to be in place we are explaining it to the parents also how important is you know it is to wear a mask right what is the importance of you know washing hands so we are conducting many workshops as well just to create awareness among you know uh, uh, community right right thank you thank you neha ma'am uh, now sujit sir uh, there is one question again uh, when we talk about covid of course administration has a larger control over the policies and you know uh, with respect to saving lives and you know uh, implementing certain rules and regulation so uh, di did you face any sort of difficulty from the administration when it comes to uh, reopening the school or how the administration role how the administration is playing a role uh, with respect to reopening the school uh, whether you know creating an awareness from there and among the parents community or helping the school or uh, probably connecting with the school so how do you see this the role of administration uh, sujit sir you are on mute i feel these are very testing times for all of us administration as an educational institution for pay for those for companies and we have a very very different environment and uh, probably it is you can apply like organizations who are actually you know helping the tight turn in a dynamic and more proactive so i would say that the administration has been proactive i mean with the, with due constraints they have had a very good delivery rate because see the thing is unless and until students are vaccinated parents will not be encouraged to come to school and uh, all the schools probably in noida have been organized with the first and second doses of vaccination for eligible children in the waiting category now people well well uh, also been approved and expect that probably that will be planned by the administration uh, sujit sir there is a there is a lag in sujit sir there is a lag in voice i would request you to switch off your video so that uh, uh, okay okay okay, okay. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I will switch quickly. Uh, I will ask my team uh, to get in touch with Sujit sir to get this fixed. Uh, I will quickly go to Richa ma'am, and uh, uh, I will understand from Richa ma'am that ma'am, uh, the role of administration in you know uh, how they are helping. What are the challenges when it comes to the role of administration and school reopening? 
Uh, you see, uh, administration is definitely uh, taking care of the vaccination as such. Uh, you must have seen uh, day before we had news that now the next cycle of vaccination is basically for children from 14 to 12 years of age. So I, uh, what I believe is that uh, government is definitely taking care of uh, bringing children back to school because um, that's the only area I think education uh, sector especially children at home, they have really suffered a lot in past two years. And now um, the vaccination drive is gearing up for children, keeping in mind um, their safety, their health, especially the mental health, I would say that, because uh, they have really suffered at you know uh, that particular area. Uh, so far, thinking about their social emotional learning, which I keep talking and addressing in various webinars also, right. that... Uh, Learning took place. There was no doubt about it. We were all on hybrid mode. We were on learning mode online. Uh, but I think there was a one area of socio-emotional learning with something that takes care, that we take care, the schools take care only in school. So uh, what I believe is that uh, from the administration point of view, we get support from the government. And I'm, I'm very hopeful, in fact, very excited that the kind of planning every school and we are doing here at Raga Global School to bring our children back to school, hoping that, you know, April, we get a complete session. We, we start the, you know, complete session on the offline mode. So right. we are working on that. Again, the awareness programs that we have to, again, start, as mentioned by my, uh, you know, uh, the uh, fellow panelists also. But awareness is very, very important because we have to issue the guidelines. Coming back to physical classes will not be the normal one as they used to start with a new session. So, of course, a lot of training is required. Um, uh, administratively, I would say that right from the support staff to the teachers, uh, to the admin staff, to the students, or the parents, I think training is required at all levels. So that's my take on uh, how are we preparing, uh, you know, ourselves for this, uh, you know, running the schools on the offline mode. Right. Thank you, Nicha, ma'am, for putting this across. I have Jyoti, ma'am, with me from RPS uh, International School. Uh, so, Jyoti, ma'am, uh, you know that this time had been really difficult and schools are actually, uh, schools building were actually shut, but uh, the classes and the education system were on. It was on. And uh, now we would like to understand since uh, there was a there was a phase when you were shifting from offline to online and now online to again offline. Right. So, of course, there are challenges in, in this transition again. But now th there's a different challenge to bring back student back to school, uh, bring student back to school. Right. Now, uh, there are different sections like middle section, uh, the junior section and the senior section. So there had been certain unique challenges across uh, the sections. So would you like uh, to uh, light, put some light on what are the challenges, unique challenges from different uh, segment of students, right, right from primary till uh, secondary or senior secondary? Okay. Yeah, sure. Actually, maybe like for some of the like principals over like the, they had their personal experience to like uh, how to make their kids uh, even how just managing our own school and uh, taking care of the admin was same actually because uh, right at the beginning from the like uh, first year of pandemic what had happened okay, just managing or making the parents uh, aware about exactly how to use these application and go with the online classes actually mm -hmm. that training process take took a lot actually and the, in the beginning it's a bit one of like we teachers are not like exactly trained for the online they are quite trained and very comfortable in online because uh, just making the little one like those are in kindergarten grade one or something is not as such easy because it was whole term like uh, responsibility of the mother have just came out at the same time and uh, we are much uh, being aware about like how do they can manage and uh, right, uh, you could say in this coming session or end of the session, what had happened, students became more comfortable in uh, home now. Right. Now making them to come here and j joining uh, like offline class is going to be again a new something like because they are just uh, in uh, something like because the, some of the kids, what did happen ki after a one hour class or a half an hour class they are used to have a nap and just having their meal at the same time and that 
that that is uh, the problem uh, we are going to uh, face because uh, we did had what uh, second term examination and offline and we did face that if right. they are okay with the playing okay when just you are managing them to sit in class and just making them to write something they are not as such comfortable so i must say ki they have uh, lost a lot and I'm, it's going to be difficult to all of us actually to uh, discipline component i guess is a major miss uh, when the schooling from home and schooling from school ah, because is, they are, they used to be in a very because comfortable place because now like uh, coming to school again sitting in class for the 3 or uh, 4 hours or something and uh, without their mothers or uh, somehow like the grandparents were taking care of their kids like at home and uh, that was they were much more comfortable at that time because they are now used to about that place like uh, sitting with their mothers or grandparents now like those of the uh, students have already started coming up because uh, what did we did uh, this year ki we have a pre session have we had done like the kids are coming earlier and like from the march uh, we have started our classes so that they'll be used to used to the school used to their teachers or something and used to the blackboard and setting habits and like right. that what did we have faced that they are not as such keen to sit in class they just came here to come out from home actually uh, like from that area okay they just want to play not to study or something it was just they have they want to come out from their home Right. So they are not just coming to learn or something like that, but they want to change their environment, and this is the thing we are facing. And it's going to be like uh, in April also; those are going to be coming first time to the school, or sure. just they are not in. Uh, even the, uh, some of are not like able to write without their mother's help or something like because now they the ratio is going to be proportionate. Like the teachers only are going to handle the ten to fifteen students at the same time, and they are used to have that concentration, regular concentration. of their mother she mm-hmm. is like sitting and making the child to write okay now write a or b or something like see you what is your ma- uh, teacher is saying or something like that so it's going to be tough now i'm not saying like it's it'll be easier but not so just i will i will uh, thank you uh, i would like to thank you jyoti ma'am but i would like to take a quick view of rita call ma'am on the same uh, ma'am since uh, ma'am uh, jyoti ma'am rightly mentioned that uh, of course this is not going to be easy bringing back uh, kids to the school because of course there had been a question of parents parents are sitting around moms are always uh, you know there for their kids now they are, they are going to get into a formal structure you know formal schooling a, a disciplined one so we would uh, you know categorically would like to know the junior section may be interested because they don't have uh, much friend circle to get influence so they can be easily uh, you know uh you can easily bring them to the schools but the middle section may be of that comfortable position sitting at home with the parents uh, not like to wake up early in the morning and maybe i'm just guessing that maybe examination could be one of the fear for the senior one or the middle one right since the examination had been online so what is your view on the specifically or you may choose uh, you may pick up the junior one and the middle one i will take uh, the feedback of other panelists too Ritesh, uh, since I happen to be a psychologist, I have my ways of dealing with it. I'm right. training my teachers and principals on it, since I look after twelve Malayalam schools. So uh, when you look at the developmental milestone, the pre-primary behaves in a different way the way the primary does, or the middle school children, or the seniors. So recently, when pre-primary children came in the morning, they had never been to school because. Uh, you know, you take admission at two and a half and three, and two years they have not seen the school building even, right. and suddenly they are coming to uh, you know KG or grade one. They were so shy, they were so insecure. They were the very first. They was, you know, they were so fearful, and they would not leave their mothers or fathers who came to drop them. Uh, but believe me, when they were leaving at twelve, the parents were requesting with folded hands, "Ki ab ghar chali." the children experience that you know what they had missed in those two or three years because a small little child wants to play wants to listen to stories wants to sing songs and what and we are an it based school so what we had done prior to starting the school uh, we had started uh, circle time online with the children 
like for small little children, we said uh, the topic would be sharing is caring, right? So right. each child get a toy or get uh, something to share. So they were all excited to see what is this new toy is going to be? What is the storybook going to be? And teachers were showing them on screen that this is what will happen. And this is a book I'll show you. And this is a rhyme that we'll sing together. This is the garden they will be playing. So children were, were a little motivated, but right. even they were shy when parents left them. But I have seen from day one till date, they don't want to go back home. The primary children, their psyche is always to run out of the home and meet their own, their friends. So they are happy too. But yes, teachers had to motivate them a lot before they started. The difficulty was definitely what other panelists are saying with 9 to 12, because they started in um, August and September. So they were lazy, they were lethargic. Their coming out was only to meet their, you know, teenagers, how they behave. All of us have been teenagers, so we know. I mean, in my age, I would talk more about Shemila Tagore and Rajesh Kanna rather than a physics chapter, right? So we understand their psyche. So teachers had to uh, have physical, uh, uh, at least about half an hour to 45 minutes, circle time with them, listening to them a lot, right? What they went through the COVID period. And why? Uh, because in circle time, the teacher doesn't say anything. It's the students who say things, right, and share. Right. So at circle time, and we have it twice a week. Uh, so in the circle time, the children who were really, really suffering, or the children who became a little depressed, the children who wanted answers to certain questions, why did Daddy die, or why did I lose this person, or you know, all that emerged out of, and that helped them to connect. Right. While we all knew that school, and even today, uh, we think that schools are only for academic, built for academic purpose. I strongly feel that, you know, when you talk about a holistic development, it is the mental, it is the intellectual, it is the physical, it is the spiritual, it is the aesthetics, all. But now that the schools have st started, I know there's a learning gap. And right. two years of learning gap will take, uh, because I been in Kashmir also. I know when schools were shut down there during extreme terrorist times and the children missed their schools for four years, five years, or two months they came and three months the schools were shut down. There's a lot of learning gap, which is still there. We will take time to fill that learning gap, yes. But instead of intellectual development, right now, I would agree with Richard, that it's time to look at uh, socio-emotional development, more so listening to a child, and not only that, having one-to-one -one connect with the parent of the child also. So that parents also have a dialogue because children, teenagers especially, love to have a dialogue. Right. So if you can motivate them and uh, the teachers can uh, get connected, not themselves with the children, the children get connected. They make that environment for which they can get connected uh, because uh, when they were writing their uh, pre-board papers before the uh, you know um, December and November, they could hardly write a paragraph, you know, because they were so much into Google mode uh, and we were really, really struggling with that. But normally now I've seen that everybody and uh, 10th and 12th results are already, uh, 10th result has already come out. They've done, just took the remedial classes. They took the um, circle time classes. They tried to motivate. And uh, today I see just 10 to 15 percent not coming because I said genuine reasons. But otherwise, they're so happy coming to school. Right. That, uh, that's really good and a positive sign that most of the parents now have belief and faith in sending this wards back to the school. And this is how we are going to make this situation normalized. So I'll quickly, uh, super quickly take the point of uh, Neha Singh, ma'am, on the same question. Uh, ma'am, uh, over to you. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, in the, last, in the past two years, we have seen that the emotional portion of children have really gone down. Right. right, they are missing that emotional connect with the teacher. You know, children come to me, the little ones, uh, three to four years, they come to me. You know, they feel alienated in the school. They have never seen the school building. This is absolutely a new place, and they wonder, you know, how beautiful the school building is. You know, they wonder, you know, the the colors they are they are attracted towards the colors of the right. classroom. They don't want, as ma'am said, Rita ma'am said, they don't want to go home. You know, so as an educator, uh, we also have to consider the personal touch that they are missing that engagement that they are missing, right? So it is our foremost important to, you know, maintain that, to work on that emotional question. 
which was which has gone down with the you know with a period of time right. that is my take on it right 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 thank you neha ma'am uh, so now i have a question for sujit sir uh, sujit sir am i audible to you yes yes i you are please perfect perfect so uh, sujit sir since we all know that uh, two year had been a long time uh, to you know kind of it it was a disruption right in a in a regular scenario of education where there was a normal situation kids were coming parents were never expected this to happen and in fact none of us right so yes now schools are reopening so now parent may have that dilemma that covid may prolong this may go long uh, this situation may go for a longer period of time or there may be some other way right and uh, for the early or the toddlers one they may like to right uh, skip the class nursery so uh, with this forum i would want you to at least give a, a message to parents that how important this is uh what and what is advisable whether to skip not to skip and how important it is to send a uh, child for class nursery sujit sir so uh, our esteemed panelists has already pointed out that there is a social disconnect in you know the developing children especially in the younger toddlers and uh, primary school students when they when they came back to school they found it very enjoyable and didn't want to go, go back home so now yes there is a dilemma in mind of parents and there is a lot of uncertainty you know in front of us but at the end of the day we are we are resilient by nature we know we, we as human beings are very resilient by nature so there may not have been a similar situation in the past 100 years however this has this has given us a lot of opportunity to rethink and reinvent ourselves so right. so probably the schools have reinvented themselves the parents are reinventing themselves the children have been you know very proactive in terms of technology usage so right. it's a new dynamic environment which has come in front of us which actually schools are going to be finding it uh, you know far more interesting to move move on further because right. a lot of lot of time has been given for introspection and many schools have taken this as an opportunity for renovation and you know uh, kind of uh, find redundancy in their systems so old, old schools have been uh, i've come across many schools who are making lot of changes in the school as soon as school is done in full scale so right. it should be a very pleasant experience for students to be back to school and and schools have really you know working have been the teachers and uh, the school administrations have been working very hard along with i would say government administration has been very very proactive right so, right so uh, we should be very you know very hopeful and uh, 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 very positive about the upcoming session now and right. uh, the students should find it a more rewarding experience than in the past i mean there, there are a, few students who have not been to school at all especially the younger ones but those who have been uh, in the school because there is a you know a time large time gap of separation so everybody values even the school whatever they want to communicate when they are uh, in offline mode probably students will be far more uh, better listeners now right. because they will be facing a new environment so right. let's uh, hope that you know this is going to be an opportunity apart from whatever adversities we've seen in the past uh, two years i mean families have been disturbed incomes have been uh, lost so right. yes there have been challenges but at the end of the day we all have to move over them you know we have to reinvent ourselves right so, so one thing i i'm i'm uh, i will totally agree sujit sir that school has uh, there has done a lot of innovation when it comes to academic delivery and in terms of upgradation of school building in fact school took this as an opportunity also to kind of upgrade their existing facilities as in when it was open for them and allowed for them to uh, kind of do this work so that i will completely agree and i will quickly take the feedback of richa uh, sujit sir you want to add on something more no i was just uh, you know kind of reinforcing that you know there are many schools are uh, who are actually you know renovating their buildings and uh, laboratories and toilets and we are one of them so right. you know this gave us an opportunity that student uh, attendance has been uh, not to the full scale and we had good time to kind of uh, you know because generally for any repair and maintenance a summer vacation was the only time available to school right so this right. was the time where you know a lot of schools have been thinking and kind of uh, trying to deliver better as soon as the school reopens right 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 so uh, thank you sujit sir for putting this uh, across to our viewers right uh, richa ma'am i have a question for you in fact uh, when i i personally took a lot of webinar for uni apply when it, it was a season of nursery admission in delhi because delhi has a uniform window for 30 days right 
uh, a lot of parent because the the admission cycle of delhi was in the middle of uh, pandemic or let's say the third wave in fact the uh, deadline to submit the form was also extended by the uh, government and the honorable education minister because the pandemic the third third wave came in between right so during those webinar we have come across this common question that why not skip uh, nursery for this year and take admission next year in class kg so uh, i why i want uh, another panelist to add on so that parent can be more aware and they have different view of different panelist on the same question to you know kind of get motivated and have a, a to set a right perspective about this question over to you richa ma'am um you know first of all i would just like to share uh, uh, some experiences of parents who approached us in uh, kindergarten and in prep grade uh, informing us that they had skipped in 2020 when we started with lockdown and uh, in 21 they approached us that ma'am we did home schooling and we want the child to be in the grade uh, in the prep grade um literally i would say that you know children were struggling so my humble request to all the parents is uh, not to skip one year you know that's a very very crucial early years of life and uh, the kind of um you know the learning that takes place an educator a teacher that helps the child to grow uh, we for you know grow in these formative years uh, it's very very difficult for parents because uh, according to parents uh, what i feel is um, nursery class is not about uh, literacy and numeracy there are a lot many things that are part of the curriculum and i believe whether it was in hybrid mode or um, you know off and on we were uh, in in the in the offline mode as well in the school uh, admission of children at early age whatever is been prescribed by the government is very very essential so yeah. kindly do not take such kind of decisions keeping in mind of skipping a year and maybe you know uh, some of the parents have skipped two years as well thinking that the okay. child would straight away uh, start schooling from grade 1 onwards and they would take care of uh, the the numeracy and literacy part of the uh, early childhood classes Uh, but uh, you know these two years crucial years of nursery and prep are way beyond numeracy and literacy i would say that uh, because children are involved in so many projects uh, they been uh, working like like we 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 promote the early childhood classes on based on regio emilia as well so certain projects where uh, in fact the parents who were attending the classes with uh, these two uh, you know age groups they were uh, so happy that you know they could sit with the educator in class and learn that how important they they said that ma'am we when we were in offices we would miss how our child is learning at such a crucial stage so what i believe is and my humble request to all the parents is that seeking admission for their child in nursery and prep is really important kindly do not skip these classes keeping in mind that home schooling is one of the solutions to it right uh, from all of you one common thing which i have learned that schools are actually pushing a lot and doing a lot of things and innovating the ways to bring back student to the school right uh, so this is one side of the story right uh, how we can make uh, this story easy for the other side so this question i i would like to raise with uh, anjali ma'am so ma'am how uh, parents can make this transition easier for sending their wards back to school to feel more uh, motivated and they should like for example like ma'am said they uh, one of the panelists like jyoti ma'am in fact mentioned that parents uh, the children are uh, children are in the comfort zone of their parent all the time they are sitting in home they have been provided all the facilities all the times now they have back they uh, they are supposed to uh, come back to the school and in the formal school with complete discipline so what do you think that how parents can make this transition easier for the kids um yeah we have been actually training the parents during many workshops and uh, you know sessions that we've had with them so even during online classes we were highly recommending that you know you do not let the routine of the child break in the sense that you know you keep a routine at home you wake up the child early you give the child a bath the breakfast should be done you know before the classes happen 
so there should not be you know any uh, uh, breakfast or lunch happening during the classes so right. in a way some sort of scheduling had been maintained during the online classes also but uh, right now again we are uh, re you know enforcing to all the parents that you know um it it has to be a lot of uh, communication it has to be a lot of talking that uh, they have to do with their children they have to first of all give them an assurance see it is really important they have to assure them that school uh, schooling is going to be a very very positive experience i mean schooling i am quoting in the sense that schooling in a physical environment is going to be a very positive experience for them and how important you know it is for them how important it is uh, you know for them to grow into a wholesome personality into a wholesome character right so that faith and that assurance uh, has to be inculcated from the parent side into the child because i think that faith and that belief and that goal is something it is the foundation stone for us to build upon so yeah. once we get a child with a positive attitude once we get a child who's you know we know that there is a parent who's there for the school to support so you know there is a long way to go then you know we can easily work out with the child we already are creating conducive environment in the school the teachers are there for counseling regular counseling so teachers as my fellow panelists have quoted that you know once the children are there in the school it is such a lively environment you know they get they start loving the school on their own so we don't really need a push for them they start eventually they'll start loving the school but yeah this is what is required from the parent right uh, so thank you anjali ma'am i'll go to jyoti ma'am and uh, ma'am how do you see the parent support uh, in order to reopening of school uh when we specifically we are talking about your school are they okay sending back uh, the kids to school and uh, you know what is their amount of uh, basically support and uh, they are making this transition easy for you uh it wasn't uh, been easy actually if a parent haven't um, actually participate in the online also and like now where they are quite happy where like school are again starting because uh, even they just want to because even they understand actually the child learns a lot like in school instead of because while sitting with the peers or like uh, bonding with the teachers helps a lot with the child so right. they are they are very happy that school are starting even they are just uh, very much uh, uh, informal about that ki ha like what are their child's habit or like have gain a lot even they said they have given a positive attitude that their child have taking interest with the uh, online class too but uh, it be a very important uh, for all of us to know that exactly what normal is going to be that uh, they are must be more uh, aware about uh, the things those are not been able in the online classes but uh, they are happy because they are even ready to send their kids right now itself only in the beginning in the march or something like they want to get their child free uh, session though i've just told you about it so that in the meanwhile of march like before the april start they'll be habitual to sit in class or come into school or something they are helping a lot even just we are getting a positive attitude you know. they are sending their son right thank you uh, thank you jyoti ma'am uh, uh, now i have a question of a parent called devina kakkar uh, like she's ask uh, they asking about uh, which one is better ib icsc or cbsc when it comes to montessori for a learning purpose so this question is for rita call ma'am and ma'am i would request you to uh, give a shortest best possible answer for this uh, yeah i don't know whether you know that uh, i created heritage schools the chain of heritage schools in delhi i was right. a culprit okay. so at that time uh, the ib thing started in india and especially the very first school dps in saket uh, went for an ib Right. and uh, we were thinking about it but i went to uh, uh, dr williams in sense difference i wanted to know what was his intake because srcc and sense difference are taken as you know the best of right so i went and met him and i said you tell me about the intake and intake that you have so he said should i tell you honestly i said yes he said cbsc students come for 
uh, mostly physics honors and maths honors and you know they can fit in anywhere right i see see people come basically for english and uh, social studies and humanities uh, it's the ib where parents have already decided that their child is going to go abroad immediately after school right because their combination of subjects what they offer uh, limits their entry to our colleges in india and right. they go for visual arts they go for performing arts they are excellent in that because they have wonderful curriculum for that and now that india is going for uh, skill based uh, right. education i think ib is also okay but don't forget it's not for a common man right uh, the kind of fee it has so it is left to the choice of a parent any curriculum every cur- like russo said leave a child in the jungle and come and take him after 18 years the child will still be educated right so it depends on the parent what do you choose why do you choose what you choose for the child but don't forget that it's the child's right to become what the child wants to become you can't impose yourself on the child so you mm-hmm. must know the difference between the three and then i decided not to have an ib because i didn't want to limit the choices for the children when they grow up right right that's uh, such a wonderful answer in fact uh, from the person who started this concept in india so it would be quite insightful for our parents and for us right uh, now uh, i am i would like to go back to richa ma'am to ask ma'am since we know that uh, cities like noida greater noida when we talk about ncr where the migrants had been shifted to these cities like the original uh, people from this this these cities are pretty less when we talk about gurgaon or let's say noida greater noida the migrants who came with the purpose of their livelihood and employment they came to these cities and uh, they formed their house and they are living here now because of this covid there had been a lot of impact and they moved back to their villages and hometowns their native place basically and uh, since there uh, still there are a set of parents who like they are still working from home their offices are still not uh, open for the work from office culture right work from office mode so uh, they are still in their native place and uh, they are still looking for an option of hybrid rather than sending their kids to a physical school so what is your piece of advice for those parent uh, should school continue the hybrid uh, system of education or your piece of advice for them to come back uh, to the city of uh, you know where their kids are studying actually richa ma'am um see what i i feel is that's my personal opinion uh, i i feel the best schooling is the offline schooling um hybrid uh, ka, you know learning was one mode that was an option given to us and uh, that was especially during the pandemic time um since now the offices are also opening and uh, they are also giving the choices to parents to uh, work on you know station or out of station uh, my request to those parents would be to actually look for a, a school that um, one it is in your station and it caters to hybrid as well as you know the offline kind of uh, mode of situation so if you're staying far from the city uh, i think look for a local school so that when an offline opportunity is available to you you can send your child for various activities um, coming back to the online mode is an alternative of course um, uh, when we talk about hybrid mode of learning it has its various advantages like you can run your remedial classes you can give an extra attention to certain students who have right. faced a lot of learning gaps as well but my um, uh, in my opinion what i feel is that you should always look for a school within the station of your working so that the child get best of both the worlds online world and the offline world of learning right so uh, you know this is uh, now i will again go back to rita ma'am since this question and uh, i would like uh, later neha ma'am to add on to this question since uh when we talk about the admission process of course we at uni apply we help parents to kind of discover school consume all the information about all the school they can compare if they have certain parameters in their mind uh, to look up to the school and see the facilities fee structure their fitment basically so they come to a certain conclusion okay out of the set of let's suppose 20 school now i have certain four five schools shortlisted finally for the purpose of admission 
So, uh, Rita, ma'am, what are the top three things a parent should consider on a generic note, not per se a school school, but uh, with respect to the kids' requirement or uh, the parental requirement? What are the top three things a parent should could consider with respect to school admission so that they can make their choice very clear? See, the top three, as you are asking, is uh, don't forget that even parents have gone through a lot of stress. Hats off to our teachers. They've been COVID warriors too. They've gone through hell. Great. But then uh, that's my duty as a teacher to a child. So if I did, uh, we created more than 8,000 uh, lesson plans for the children so that they don't miss it. Even now, now when we are talking about blended learning and hybrid learning, we are at an advantage because we already have this pool of bank with us. So nobody is missing on anything. But when parents are approaching this way, there was a time when we would advertise and we would put banners and we would have hoardings and things like that. And you all have helped us in admission in past also. The entire mood has changed, right? right? We used to seek children and parents used to make their choice, so shortlisting five, six schools, whatever. Right. But today is the time when we have to seek a child through a parent, right. convincing a parent not on your curriculum. That Because normally we used to the activity based or steam based or stem based you know now is the time when you have to emotionally approach a parent giving that parent an assurance how safe is the environment right. how emotionally your teachers can connect to so uh, last month say we're having certain activities in different areas in noida where a group of teachers along with the admission counselor and the marketing people are going and meeting and having different activities done, but they are spending a lot of time with the parents one-to-one, -one, right. understanding their need so that we can cater to their needs. It's a time is gone when you would say, okay, this is the thing I have and I'm a brand and people would approach you. The time is when the parent feels that my child is physically safe in this school, my child is going to be emotionally connected in this school, right. And my child, whatever academic gap the child has had, even if a three-year-old child is coming to you, has had, is very shy, has had that socio-emotional gap. So the parent has to be very, very assured that you know these are the teachers. They're so happy and so uh, you know uh, embracing my child, even during activity when my child is not in the school, they're still ad not admitted, and yet they are connecting so well. So parent gets assured that this is the place that I must put my child. Academics will follow. Right. So thank you for putting this across to our viewers, ma'am. In fact, uh, for parents, it, it's quite, uh, you know, uh, it's quite challenging to take a final con when it comes to admission. Uh, so Neha, ma'am, your quick add-on to this question, please. For sure. So I'll add on quickly. So as a parent, you know, if you'll ask me, I would look at the facilities that have been provided by the school. And it includes everything, the safety, security, the curriculum, and the teachers and the faculty management and everything. So first is the point of the facility. And next is your curriculum, whether we are following the experiential uh, you know, curriculum or not, are we well connected to the child or not? And the third and the most important thing which I feel as an educator is whether the system is process driven or not, whether all the policies are in place, whether the communication is in place, whether you know we can reach out to the management for any query. So I think these are the things that we, as an educator, as a parent, you know, they should keep in mind when they're considering us. Right, right. So that's a very valid point that communication is there and uh, people are approachable. That solve half of the problem of a parent uh, whenever it comes to any any query, any question or any dispute for that matter. Uh, so uh, my next question is for uh, Sujit sir. Sir, uh, uh, we, we spoke about, uh, you know, admission process. We spoke about the challenges for bringing back, uh, in bringing back the student uh, to the school, convincing parent, role of parent. But uh, when it comes to teachers, teachers have actually played a vital role. Because you being, uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, as a leader, you have done a lot to upscale upskill your uh, you know teachers and help them to kind of switch from offline to off, uh, online system overnight and then to hybrid but in this entire system entire ecosystem of education now with the uh, let's say new normal 
where they have to be equipped with the offline class and the online class. So how difficult for the teachers uh, this situation is when we talk about the hybrid system where they are more burdened uh, with the offline and the online classes. So Sujit sir, your uh, quick view on sir, that. Uh, see, the thing is, the environment has definitely thrown a new dynamic in front of us. Right. But, but uh, as the school opens, the sustainable, if Corona is, you know, letting us, you know, get back to our normal lives, the sustainable method would be offline mode where teachers have a one-to-one -one contact with students and parents. And, uh, but uh, however, the environment is not under our control. So the teachers have adapted very well. I mean, they have coped up. I mean, despite uh, uh, another panelist said very wisely that, you know, the teachers are not were not equipped to handle uh, the online mode initially. And all, all teachers have done very well to cope up with this environment. And gradually, as, as things progress, the hybrid system, even if it is required to take place, then so be it. We have to take the challenge and accept the challenge. Irrespective of, uh, you know, we have to upgrade the skill. You know, today, because of the online exposure, the teachers have also taken an, you know, upgradation of skill. They're not restricted to the pre-COVID uh, time of, where you know they could not handle smartphones and on a Zoom call or uh, you know not be able to handle a laptop if they are not IT based. I mean, even a Hindi teacher, even a subject teacher is very very well versed to handle all this technology now. So they are well well um, versed with all this system now, and they are going to be taking the uh, you know situation very very intelligently. They could be uh, you know helping the students move forward. This is what I feel. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sujit, sir. Uh, I have one question from a parent uh, called Ashima. Uh, so uh, this question is for, again, for, uh, from, I would like to hear from Rita, ma'am. Uh, so parent says that my kid is four year old and she's now eligible for KG. But parent wants her to send to nursery, right? So how is it possible? What is your piece of advice for this ma'am? We, uh, we have this is a misnomer that there's an age. Uh, we just uh, what CBSC or any other board has done is they've given you the minimum age of entrance. They don't tell you that if a child is four year old cannot go to pre nursery or nursery, right? And now with NEP coming in, we know that a child can be seven when the child can start class one, right? And so there is no uh, such there's no such limitation which has been prescribed we have always followed the minimum age, not the maximum. Now, two, two years difference doesn't make a difference. It, it is not a norm. So four year old can go to a nursery. There's nothing to get scared, but it is always for a parent to see that there is no learning gap right in the beginning. So as the other panelists said, they must start uh, and the, every school has a different kind of curriculum. They should not miss out on the concepts which the other classmates would have developed and the child would miss that. So there's right. no limitation on age. Right, right, right. Thank you. Thank you, Rita, ma'am. And uh, I hope uh, the query of Ashima is fulfilled now. Uh, I have one question for uh, and uh, for Jyoti, ma'am. So Jyoti, ma'am, uh, one parent, Ravi Kumar, is asking uh, for nursery class, why should parent prefer a K-12 schooling over a play school in a very near location? Jyoti ma'am, uh, are you able to, am I audible? I guess there is some connectivity issue with Jyoti ma'am. Uh, I would like to pass on this question uh, to Richa ma'am. Ma'am, a parent is asking why K-12 education uh, for nursery when I can send a child to the nearby play school in the, in the nearby society area. Hello, yeah. Could you just repeat the question? It's, it's the question is, uh, Pa parent is asking why to send a child for a class nursery in a K-12 school. Uh, why not to send that kid to play school in the nearby vicinity? Uh, see, uh, there's no harm in sending a child to an early childhood school uh, or a play school. Uh, 
uh, then later on the child can take admission in uh, you know a, a formal school as well starting from grade 1 to grade 12 but as uh, you know uh, rita mam ma said that uh, we need to define a path for our child that what what kind of schooling you are looking forward to uh, when you choose a school for your uh, kid uh, you definitely have created a path where you would like to see your child down the years. So every school has a curriculum, every school has a, has a plan and a vision. Uh, and um, play schools have limitations, you know, because their, their vision is limited to uh, those formative years of uh, maybe two plus, three plus or four plus maximum that they cater to. But when we talk about K to 12 school, they have a complete vision ahead of them, uh, wherein they plan the child's learning for the next 14 years of his life, right? From nursery to, K to uh, you know, to grade 12, where they would like their children to move out of the school. In fact, some of the schools have plan their curriculum in such a way that when the children move out of grade 12, they are able to choose a career for themselves. So right. that's what I would uh, you know, request parents to look forward to certain schools which have a complete defined curriculum at the earlier childhood stage, then the middle years and the senior years of, of the schooling. Uh, study the curriculum of the school, what the vision and what programs the school has to offer for your child. So that uh, five years down the line or six years down the line, uh, you know, you would not regret that, yes, I, I missed on the, these formative years. I, I should not have brought my child to a playway. I should have got my child admitted right from uh, the nursery of that particular school. Right, right. So that's wonderfully uh, mentioned to all the parents. In fact, uh, they can even experience that one year uh, and uh, they can see the surveys and uh, yes, uh, Rita ma'am would like to add on something, but I will just... Intense. I want to add on to what Richard said rightly. Uh, we, psychologically, I would say that, uh, you know, neighboring schools are better for a small like, little toddler. Right. But then the kind of curriculum today we have in all progressive schools is sequential. Hmm. So when you go for the sequential curriculum, uh, if the child misses that in a particular school for three years, the sequencing gets broken down and child gets difficult. It's very difficult for the child then to come to grade one or grade two and miss out on those concepts because those sequences will not be re repeatable. Right. Wherever right. you have a sequential learning, it's better that the child starts from preschool. And in fact, uh, with a general mindset, I guess it is a one entry and one exit uh, so that parent can be rest assured for the 14 years if they ensure the entry in, in the uh, nursery class uh, in a K-12 school. So with that all, uh, I would like to thank each one of you for sparing your time and sharing your valuable feedback and answering all the questions to help parents to understand more on uh, that how to decide for a school when it comes to nursery admission or let's say the school admission. Also to help them understand that why physical schooling is important and how they should feel more confident, uh, uh, like uh, most of the panelists mentioned that they are doing a lot of work in terms of, like Sujitsa mentioned, uh, school has done a lot of innovation, infrastructural developments uh, during these two years. So now children have new things to witness and see in the school, right? Whereas uh, Anjali ma'am also mentioned and the uh, other panelists also mentioned that schools are working in a fashion where they can facilitate more, uh, provide conducive environment, safe, environment and take care of kids for their holistic learning uh, where education and their overall development can be taken care of. So with this all, I would like to thank each one of you for joining us and sparing your valuable time and uh, thanks to all the parents who are joining us on Zoom uh, and our Facebook Live. Uh, also, uh, for all the updates and upcoming webinars, you can uh, go to www.uniapply.com and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can simply search Uni Apply on YouTube and you can subscribe our channel and uh, you can subscribe our social channel on uh, social handles on Facebook and Instagram. With this, uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ritesh. Thank you, Ritesh. Thank thank you, you, Ritesh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's yeah. wonderful uh, joining. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for such a wonderful and fruitful session.